Welcome to Inside a Bow, ladies and gentlemen. How are y'all doing? I am your host, Dave Jones, and this is the Black History Month Reflection Series. Um, this is the third episode of the series for this year, 2024. And up to this point, we've had some great guests, obviously, and then we have another one for you today. But before I get into the guest, I want to invite you to subscribe to the podcast. It's free. It's easy. You just click the button. And if you don't want to listen after that, after this, that's cool. But I, I, I hope you stick around because we talk about everything from real estate to life to everything. We try to bring some different uh, perspectives especially for a real estate podcast, uh, for an abode podcast. I don't even call this a real estate podcast. It's an abode podcast, which we're all about community and a little bit of everything. So um, also while well, providing some gems and hopefully something that you can you can glean from this. Uh, so let me get into my guest today. We're just going to go ahead and get started. It's a Sunday evening. We're at the end of Black History Month. We're reflecting on things and we're just talking about black things. And so if this is your opportunity to be a fly on the wall, listen to two black folks talk about black things. Uh, so my guest today has a background, his background. He is from Queens, New York. I uh, served in the military for eight years, served the Navy for eight years. He's a recording artist, a songwriter. Uh, he works with and leads uh, youth in the Pierce County area, which is really super dope. And then also is a Freemason. So 5% Nation Stand Up. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So my guest today is Eubanks, Eubanks Cedos, as I know him. Uh, how you doing, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing better now, brother. Great. Thank you <laughs> for having me. Great to be here. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So thank you for, I, you know, when we always talk, we end up talking for like, an hour and some change just because you know we will touch it'll be random too it'll be touch base it'll be just like we never even left kind of and that's why i always enjoy talking to you so i was like man you need to go ahead and get up on the pod because last time we was talking for like an hour and some change I was like man we need to go this is a podcast like why don't we get up on the pod <laughs> so thank you i appreciate you taking time out of your your weekend to to jump on man anytime, anytime. um so, man, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, because the way I met you is through, or not, not met you, I first heard you on on a joint. So, um, you can, you know, I, talk, I first heard you on the joint, and I was like, man, this is crazy. I asked Daryl Cruz, like, who is this? And he said so-and-so, and he's like, oh, you live out here? And I was like, what? You know? And So, anyway, all 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 comes around. We, we check out on Instagram or whatever. And then I forget when we first met, like, I, I think it was just you hit me up on Instagram or something like that because of the uh, stuff I was doing at FOSS. Wow. Oh, that's what it was. FOSS Friday. That's what it was. Uh, so, yeah. So that's the connection. So anyway, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. How'd you end up in the Northwest from from Queens? Listen, how does how does any good brother end up across <laughs> the country? <laughs> Away from his homeland. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what's up right. yeah that's what's up so so tell us about yourself man what what do you want people to know about about eubanks my name is eubanks eubanksito many aliases my honorable name is paul maestri williams my righteous name is born wise born wise allah Okay. And like you said, we'll get into that. Um, I am born and raised Queens, New York. There's some moving around, though. There's some moving around, though. Um, due to um, a past that we may get into. Um, <laughs> also due to a family history that we may get into. Mm -hmm. Spent some time in Pennsylvania right before joining the Navy. I joined the Navy from Pennsylvania. Did eight years there. Came back home. Came back home to New York. Went to school, took music more serious, took songwriting serious, put me in some circles that I appreciated, mm -hmm. and I reconnected with my love out mm -hmm. there. She was living in Newark. We reconnected, and she's originally from here, oh, so okay. she pitched the idea of coming back here due to the lower course of living and better quality school districts for our baby. Mm -hmm. Who's no longer a baby? She's twelve years old, turning thirteen this yeah. year. And Damn. since being back out here, I've, I've become a mental health therapist, and mm. that is a calling that I had entertained for a long time. Previously, I was in the legal world as a paralegal, mm. but 
just my history with connecting with people and joining with people and just being understanding um, led me to that profession. And mm-hmm. um, I'm not looking back. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, clearly you're doing you're doing good work in, in your in your field and especially for someone that <clears throat> is not from here. You've, you seem to make a lot of connections. And, you know, we were just talking before this. He was like, I was just with Logic and man, Logic's been on the podcast. He was one of the Black History Month Reflection Series po- episodes. So for those listening, go back and take a listen to listen to that one. Um, <clears throat> and that's not planned. You know, that's just part of being part of the, in the Pacific Northwest. But really, honestly, when we talked about this on the last episode. Um, there's not a lot of black, you know, the, there's not a lot of black folk in, in, in Washington in general. So a lot of times, if you know somebody, you're going to probably six degrees of separation, you're probably going to know somebody. But um, anyway, tell me a little bit more about, so we talked about Freemasonry and 5% or like you're a 5 percenter. So like, tell me a little bit about that. Like, what is a 5 percenter, like a Freemason, if you will, like, is that like a religion or is it just something because listeners not, might not understand what we what we say when you say you're Freemason. Right. Can you explain that a little bit? Absolutely. Well, free, Freemasonry is, is a fraternity. Um, it is a system of morality veiled in allegory, illustrated through mm-hmm. signs and symbols. And mm-hmm. the five percent nation is is the culture I'm, I'm a part of. Um, OK, it's it's completely separate has nothing to do with freemasonry okay and the five percent nation um, is a culture we are not religious we are not a religion we don't practice religion in any way shape or form we take nothing on face value and we explore the knowledge wisdom and understanding of ourselves and shaping our own and manifesting our own realities that we wish to live in and that's how we add on not mm-hmm. only to ourselves but to our families and to whatever um world that we wish to be a part of Mm-hmm. that's dope because i think people might get a different they might or first they might not even know second they might not understand like that is they might think it's original that's why i asked that that question really pointedly because like people might not understand or know because it's not something that's as prevalent here on the on the west coast um, but if you go to the East coast, you know, you can just, you can, I'll run into a brother. I don't know if I'm talking to a 5% or not, you know, it's just, it's just about the way you talk, the way you think, the way, just the way you carry yourself. Um, and it's pretty dope. So like my first exposure to that was like Rakim and, and, you know, old, old heads like that. So for the old head, and then you got AZ and like some of the, those are just the bigger names that I've listened to. There's obviously others, but you know, those are the big names that you could, and I just heard the dialect and I was like, okay, these are, these brothers are different. They're thinking about some different things. You know, there's this depth to them and this mystery, this mystery that I liked, that I enjoyed, you know, the knowledge of self piece, you know, so really enjoyed all of that. Does that come, does that come like, and do you, do you, does that, do you infuse that in your music at all? Or is that just something that you just have on the side here? That's just part of, part of yourself and part of you. Absolutely, because because I am the true and living, mm-hmm. right? It it will be manifest in everything that I do, including the music. I make a number of references to the culture. I make a number of references to um, who I am, um, what I represent, and you know, if you listen, it, it'll be there. It'll be there for you. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I know sure. this is not to you, Dave. Just yeah. in general. That's, that's what I mean. I know yeah. you with me. Yeah. yeah, no, I know I know I hear it. I'm just asking I'm asking right. for the folks, man. I'm asking for the people, man. Um so yeah, and that's so when we're talking about black so like this we're talking about the Black History Month reflection series. So when we talk about blackness, another thing we talked about was when we talk about blackness, we talk about black people in America, a lot of people's thinking, in my opinion, or just from my perspective and experience, defaults to like African Americans. And <clears throat> you mentioned you're from, or you're uh, Puerto Rican. So, and from, from the, from the queen, from Queens, from the East coast. And so like, there's much more than just African Americans. When we, when we talk about black people, and I've talked about this with Cruz, when Cruz is on the show, this, we talked about the diaspora of black blackness and what has been your experience on that front like have you been does it 
does it shift from places where people might be more exposed to other black people, like on the East Coast versus on the West Coast, like over here, especially in the Pacific Northwest? Are you treated differently or do you see it? Um, do, do you experience it differently? Like, how do people view you up here in the Pacific Northwest, like as a black man, just straight up? Do they even think about your ethnicity or your background or is it just like, oh, he's black? That's an interesting question. I think mm -hmm. it's it's important to note that I, I am born in New York, grew up in New York, grew up in America. So that makes me a black American mm -hmm. with a Puerto Rican heritage. Right. Um, and and the Puerto Rican heritage comes from my father's side of of, of that genealogy. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you do the knowledge on that. You know, it's important that you do the knowledge on your true self as far as how you arrived. Oftentimes, I see these flags and bios, but you don't speak the language of that flag. and mm -hmm. You may not know too much about the history of whatever flag that is being bared. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to do the knowledge on it about how you arrived here and what, what qualifies you as that. Mm -hmm. In New York... And in the tri-state area, naturally, the the hue and complexion of Caribbean Latins are going to be like you and me, right? And, right. and darker and lighter. So, mm -hmm. I am more likely to be approached as a Spanish speaker mm. in New York or in the tri-state area yep. without it being a a thing it's, right. it's out here it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. black guy he, <laughs> hey, he's black everyone and he speaks another way so it, there are some some differences i would say and that's that's in general of yeah. course there have been times you know being in california or even out even out here at my last job I was introduced, or rather, I met a, a a lady who worked at Columbia Tower. That's where I worked at, mm -hmm. and she was Gary Funa, and mm -hmm. they identify as the African descendants, very explicitly, who mm -hmm. live in you know uh, Central to South America. So you could be Gary okay. Funa from Ecuador, El Salvador, Honduras, Belize. And they have a, a nationalism about being Gary Funa. It's almost like being Geechee, similar to that. Mm. That's that's their version of of Geechee. Like we are explicitly descendants of African uh, people. Mm -hmm. So, and and, and I, I can't say where they identify to have lineage connected with. You know, whether it be, right. Um, Nigeria, Kenya, I, I, I can't identify that. But I do know that about the Garifuna. And so I remember connecting with her and, she, she, you know, very dark, darker skinned woman, Spanish speaking, mm -hmm. of course, from, I believe, El Salvador or Honduras. And mm -hmm. it was it was like nothing. And I appreciate those moments because right. Latin people... Caribbean Latin people have been black for hundreds of years. So <laughs> to me, it's not a, it's not foreign. It's not a foreign idea, but if you've never been exposed to that, I, I completely understand how it is. Yeah. Foreign. No, a lot of people who, who are listening to this podcast or a lot of people up, up here, myself included, aren't surround. We're not immersed in that. So we don't really know. I mean, you know, because just if you, if you do the knowledge or if you, have been curious about it or you research it or you know somebody that's immersed in that or you go to to new york or you're part of hip-hop and you just understand just from you know <clears throat> i had to i had to get that knowledge though from hip-hop because i was growing up in gay harbor washington <laughs> like fat joe was my first my first because i'm first i'm like why is right. he saying the n-word you know and then and then i start doing doing the math and be like okay I'm looking at I'm looking at okay he's he's talking about he's from here I I looked that up I started because we didn't have the internet back then you know like I had to go off of just whatever I'm listening to and right. and whatever MTV's telling me 
um, because all I know was black and white. I didn't understand all the different cultures. We had Cambodians and we had, you know, Japanese because I'm part Japanese, too. So I understood some cult. It's not like I didn't know cultures, but in terms of the Latin culture, I wasn't exposed to that here. So right. it was it was definitely a different um, different energy and vibe. Um, right. And I'll be honest, like and this sounds hella, hella uh, shallow. No, no, but, no, let me hear no, no. No, <laughs> this sounds hella shallow. So, um, white man can't jump. Rosie Perez, right? She set it off, you know. Living the, and so then you go to live in color. You start. So now I'm starting to see like all all these, uh, you know, just different different types of Latin folks in popular culture, at least that's surrounded by hip hop, at least. Um, and now I'm starting to make the connections. Now this is me at you know ten, eleven, twelve eight nine years old you know so like it's not like i'm a fully formed individual but i'm at least trying to be exposed to things and thinking about these things just because that's what i liked and that's what i was listening to right so you mentioned az az is dominican yeah 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 yep yep you know and i think that's also important to note like you know sometimes even in latin culture it, it's it, it can get really complex and we'll, we'll maybe save that for another day yeah that's but a whole that's a whole often, other podcast oftentimes there's this how do i say this sometimes i think i don't want to say people expect like if you're latin or have latin descent heritage whatever like that you're like but that you become a caricature like mm. the fast spanish speaking the you know yep. south Samaranga everywhere yep. you go yeah I mean, you look at a guy like az that's 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 somebody that i kind of can relate to he's just a regular person I'm just, yeah like Same. that's that, AZ is one, one of my favorite one right. of my favorite mcs ever right you know so it's it's just like I I I don't I don't think people expect you to prove yourself. I don't think it's about that either. But I think that comes this idea of what a Latin person or Caribbean Latin, whatever, how they present themselves, and it, you know I, I I think that's uh, stereotypical. But mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> uh, so how did you get in? Like you're a recording artist. Like, how did you, how did that all come about? Is that something that you knew you were going to do as a kid? Were you just, did you just fall in love with music and songwriting um, as a kid? Or is it just something that came along? I'm interested to hear about how you got in, involved in music. Well, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. In New York, you, I, me personally, I almost expected everybody <laughs> to be able to rap. <laughs> I, I was born in the 80s. I was born, you know, I was born 86. Yeah. So, you know, by the time I was, you know, making executive decisions at seven, you know, it was, it was what, 93. Rap was in full. Yep. Biggie oh, was out. Man. Hot was Bro, out. Everybody 93, was out. 93 was one of the best years of hip hop ever in, in my, in my lifetime. And I'm a, you know, I'm an old, I like to call myself an old new head. Mm. But yeah, 93. So I, I'm with you. I'm following. I'm tracking. Right. And and you can only imagine even years beyond 96, 97, you know, it's 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 full it's full on D DMX is out by this time. Yeah. Uh, Mace um you know start start I, I knew about Cameron around this time. Mhm. Mm he was he was around and you know we Everyone in my peer group, maybe they couldn't rap, but mm -hmm. they were a part of ciphers, at least the ambiance of it. Yeah, and so yeah. it's it. I never saw it as anything too special. Now, it was something special to be really good at. It. That's what yeah. I will say. Yeah, the art and act of rapping was common commonplace, but to be really good at rapping. That was always a special feeling you got from being around a really good rapper. 
Mm. Uh, and I, I, you know, somebody I failed to mention, Big L. Yep. He, he's a uh, phenomenal rapper. So, and I got a hot take time, for Big L. Talk about it. I got around a Big L hot time, take. And I think we've talked about it. Right. Maybe. Let me hear it. I don't know. I think Big, Big L would have been the Hove. I think Big L would have been Jay Z. If he didn't give him, not 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 Jay Z to how he is now. I'm saying right. at the time, at the I think Jay Z kind of took his juice and kind of lifted off because to me, Big L was like that guy. To me, um, possibly. I'm not sure if he Big L would have needed some assistance with his branding. Yeah, yeah, whole, yeah. The whole, business whole, side. Yeah, yeah. The business um, side. He didn't have that with what Hove had, but right. in terms of skill and just overall like trajectory of right. where he was going from a music perspective and an MC right. perspective I thought that he was he was the one he was the me. one right um hove hove I think painted a, a clear well big L painted a clear picture of a lifestyle that he was living and <laughs> I think I think that hove's the story, the the, it, it's almost like Hove made a play out of his life, mm. whereas Big L just told you what it was. Right, right, right. I think there was some production in the lyrics of Jay Z that really made it, like, wow, this is really, it's really nice to be here, <laughs> right? Yeah. And Big L was kind of, I don't want to say scary, but it was, it, it got you in a gritty mood. Mm -hmm. Hove got you in the mood like okay yeah this is where I'm at but you know if I do this with the money you know I can go gamble in Vegas with these yep. guys and, and you know being the Beamers and the Bentleys so mm -hmm. but um, being really good at rapping was something special and I did find out early that I was really good so mm. I would say I kind of whew, I I I I had this idea that I was at least a okay singer mm -hmm. at around maybe seven or eight. I'm talking about okay. elementary school. Like I had this idea, like, oh, okay, I, I sound I sound like something. Okay. The rapping piece at about nine ten, mm. and I'm trying to remember the feeling I had realizing, like, dang, I'm, I'm good at this. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I felt oh like I wasn't overwhelmed with emotions, but it was more of a confidence thing. Like, okay, I know I can do this. Okay, so so that was when you knew that you could. And then what was the what did the rest look like? Like, when did you start? When did you start like really making like recording and doing all that, like and taking it oh, seriously? Wow. Like, when did you really start taking it seriously? I didn't take it serious until I got out of the Navy. Okay. But so you'd already I did been start, to the Navy. And... I did start recording. I was recording in high school. And I had, uh, well, let me correct that. I remember recording on a, over a cassette tape in my house with a friend of mine mm -hmm. over somebody else's record. Oh, the mm -hmm. Drag On record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I have a song with Drag On now. Isn't that something? So, um, over that Drag On beat, a friend of mine, we recorded on a cassette tape. Just <laughs> plug the mic into the speaker and press record. Mm -hmm. That was kind of fun. And having other like peers notice that I was good enough to rap with, that was also a confidence booster. Yeah. And a story really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Shoot. Um, so I moved to Pennsylvania. My best friend now, right, like twenty over 25 years at this point, he called me from a friend house and said, hey, okay. my, my friend, well, I knew the guy. He said, I, he said he needs somebody to sing on his hook. And at first I said no, right? Like, I don't want to sing. I'm a rapper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You do right, so <laughs> I call. I thought about it for a second. I called him out. I said, "All right, I'll do it. Whatever." And the guy was a rapper, Puerto Rican guy. 
right? Uh-huh. Both both mother and father Puerto Rican from Puerto Rico, so first generation. I don't know how that works right now. Anyway, <laughs> um, he was, was really good. Like we was calling him Punt, right? Because okay. he happened to be oh, big. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay. he was really good. I'm pretty sure he's still good. I just don't keep in touch with him anymore. But I'm talking about. When we was in high school, he had grown men showing up to the bus stop to battle him. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> like, like, yeah, that's he crazy. He was off the bus, and it was crowded. He was like, he felt accosted. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, you know, crazy. grown men was like, you know, I heard you was the guy. Yeah. So I want to battle you. And it was, so he was good, really good. And it, it was almost like one of those Kanye situations. Like, well, you know, a rap too, right? You know, like, I, uh-huh. I can do this. This is cool. But you know, I rap, right? You know, similar to how Kanye was with the production and yep. the rap. And Hope was like, yeah, whatever. And we ended up forming a group. Not immediately. Uh-huh. It was really just me singing on his hook. We we went out to, like, the woods, cut a track, maybe did, like, a remix to that, something I don't know. Yeah. And so I kind of rode his coattails at first. His mom, you know, drove us. She put up the money. It was like $40 for like two hours back then. Yeah, yeah. This was 20 years ago. And, you know, that was where I think things officially started. Like, yeah. Like, I, I do this. I'm a mm. recording artist and I can record music. Damn. Yeah. And, just that feeling what, what what I got from that like when I'm when I'm listening to that story the one thing that I think that the youth right now in hip hop don't understand is that part about ciphers and the part about being able to rap and actually <clears throat> having to have skills in order to make the music like because you had to pay for the studio time so you couldn't go in there and just bs it like you had to be on point and you had to you couldn't take a million takes because you're you're wasting literal time you couldn't just do it on the computer at home so you know i just don't in terms of lyricism i think kids are listening to what people are saying i just don't think that they pay as much attention to diction and like the way the words are put together and the storytelling and all of that kind of stuff um that's just that's just me and what I'm seeing with my boys and what they like to listen to and right. the Ken Carsons of the world and the you know all these other other cats that's coming up um, and you know I give them I, I listen it's not that I'm not I don't I'm not hating at all you know I don't hate I'm just this is my objective opinion <laughs> you know all right I try you're right I try to be as objective as possible yeah no yeah. hating no hating I'm not there's no emotion behind it because yeah but. How do you feel about like? Cause I know you're you're with the young bulls now too a lot, and like, what are they on? And are you are you feeling it? Do you think it's like, in terms of the hip hop that you came up with, and especially being a recording artist and a writer yourself, like, where do you what do you think of of the new stuff compared to like, I don't know, things that we came up on, the music that we came up right. on, or the elements of hip hop, like just in general, you know, like, are we following the code or are we kind of moving away? We're moving away. Absolutely. Oh, okay. And circumstances, conditions are different. Mm-hmm. Right? Think about historically where, how far away we were from the war on drugs mm. at that time. The internet. Um, think about um, um, the home, the family structure in homes. Mm. A lot of us were being raised by grandparents. Aunts. Yeah. I, I I I happen to know people who were raised by their parents, which was I think great. Um, but even one of my cousins, I remember I took one of my cousins to box, like in a boxing gym, and mm-hmm. I introduced him to this guy, and he's like, "This is my brother." His first, my cousin's first question was, "Same mother, same father?" Because <laughs> we're just not, that doesn't happen around my world, right? Even me and my my siblings, we we don't. Two of them share the same father, but. Yeah, my family. Was it only two? Yeah, same way. So, you, you you think about just the conditions of of that time. It's it's gonna necessarily breed different outcomes, mm. and I, I I try to appreciate it as much as I can. Am I biased to that 
pocket of music, absolutely. Um, yeah. DMX, how's it going down? Uh, That's what my, man. Come on, bro. Right, come on, right. Man. Talk about it. You know, um, Puffy and Mace. That that era. G. Depp. Make this hmm. money. You know, right when the Harlem Shake was kind of popping. Remember when they came out the Harlem Shake and it wasn't even the Harlem Shake and it was the meme viral meme and it was. I was like, this ain't oh the Harlem gosh. Shake. This is crazy. <laughs> this is what is this? this they is took insane. the Harlem Shake and made it completely something else. <laughs> yeah, right there. I, I don't know. I, don't, I have, <laughs> you know, and I guess, you know, if that's what they want to know it as, sure. <laughs> you know, just not so that's what's heart. crazy. But that's what's crazy. That's why we got to talk about this in terms of hip hop and why I'm talking about hip hop and why it's a topic here because I feel like, you know, and I'm just going to say American culture or white supremacy culture takes some things and it strips like the actual meaning of something. So in, in, in the current case in politics is taking terms like woke, which is a positive term of saying, saying like, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of the systems, be aware of like your history. And now it's used as a de facto term for black people or people right. who support black people. Right. Um, you can go down the line in terms of just sayings and things, but the Harlem shake was a, and it wasn't political, but it was just one of them things where I'm like, this is crazy. The Harlem yeah. shake is, is a joint. It's a dance and it's a song by G Depp. And now it's a viral meme of just people like of a thing. That's not even like paying homage at all, like to, to what it is. And that was a black culture thing. Like we created that with no. Oh. And so you have kids now who, when you say Harlem shake, they're thinking of a viral meme, not G Depp. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's what I mean by the whitewashing of hip hop, of taking mm. things and really wow. like just stripping it completely of, like of why the origin you have of to use that name. That's what I'm saying. Like that and, right. and so that's that's what I'm getting at. Like I and I I because I, I want people to understand like because people don't understand hip hop and, and the origins of it because of things like that happening. And it's happened many times with other different other different songs and sayings and terms and slanguage and all of that. You know, so that's that's the part that really I like to talk about a lot and I've watched happen in real time over the right. course of thirty years plus right. thirty plus years. Um so I guess, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but like, let's just go ahead. What what elements of hip hop do you see in music today that at least mirror the the past? Like, are there any artists or people that like Cole just dropped a, a thing, a little, uh, he just dropped a Wednesday, like a vlog on, right. on the fall off. It's coming. So like, right, right. Yeah. I'm, see, and I'm loving that. Oh man. What, what music do you see today that mirrors like kind of the elements of hip hop because you said we're straying further away from it, but is there anyone or anything that's happening right now that tells you that it's still there's still it's still here? Absolutely, it, it's it's you've always had to find it. I, I do want to say that mm. the main thing that's changed through time is the like lanes of access, right? Oh. 20 years ago, you had to watch 106 and Park, Rap City, The Basement. You had to watch, I don't want to say TRL. I don't think they were proponent of hip hop, just pop mm -hmm. culture for them. Um, certain radio stations, Power 105, Power 99. Um, I forget the radio station in Atlanta. It was, it was certain, it was, it was, I don't want to say a finite, but there was a grouping of outlets that you got this exclusive music from. And that, right. that, that is a gift and a curse in itself because mm -hmm. naturally some people are going to be barriered by that and you won't have access to everyone. But now we have this, I forget what you call it, but it's like when you have too many options, right? Almost, almost too many. So it's coming at us pause so fast that <laughs> It's, it's difficult to, one, make a decision, and two, um, well, make a decision on what to pick and then make a decision on what you actually like. Right. And, and so we, we, I think we naturally have this uh, tendency to um, gravitate towards what 
brought us nostalgia or brings us nostalgia. Mm. Um, but um, if I had, I mean, there are artists I like. I like Boldy James. Of course, I like the whole Griselda camp. I like Freddie Gibbs, mm-hmm. regardless of that that beef or tiff that they have going on between Benny and Freddie. Right. I like Bruiser Wolf. I like um, Fat Rage from Detroit. I like the Detroit and Milwaukee thing. I, I, I like mm. I like what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we spoke about Sky Zoo, but Sky Zoo more is he's just here right now in this era. He comes from our <laughs> era, right, right. But I think that's cool. I like that a whole lot. Mm, I know that there are some artists that I'm missing, mm-hmm. certainly. Um, but anything in that wheelhouse is good for me. Also, Rock Marciano. He's also mm-hmm. in this era, but not of this era. Right. And right. I like T.I. Son. I like Damani. Damani's good. Mm-hmm. And I would have to do some. Maybe Raz Fresco. I would have to do some more. A little bit more digging. Yeah, those are, those are some names that people will, I mean, go check them out. Because I, uh, I, I'm not even up on a lot of them, you know. Right. Um, I like you, I'm Banks. Up on like, you Banks. <laughs> you Banks, you though. <laughs> you right. Banks, you though. Yeah, I like him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what are your thoughts on? So, here's one thing that trips me out when I when I think about hip hop and I I watch hip hop and I and I go to shows and I see in the audiences whether it's a big show or a little show. A lot of the at least in the Pacific Northwest. Now I've been to shows other places and you know, there's, it just depends on the demographics of where you live too. a lot of it, but there are a lot of sold out stadiums that are predominantly white for, for a hip hop show. Right. Um, now why is it to me and hip hop also is the number one genre in America officially, like in terms of listen to the number one, listen to genre. This is by Nielsen SoundScan. I thought it was that 10 years ago, but like right. Nielsen is playing catch up with the numbers and how they get the data or whatever. Right. Um, so it's it, for the number one, for number one. And then when you look at like country, for example, like I want to like country. Beyonce just dropped a country joint and it's the, it, it went number one. Right. And I think it, t- it it's definitely ruffled some feathers, little Nas X went number one in country ruffled some feathers why is that like why why can't and here's like why does country it seems exclusive and not very welcoming to anybody else but a white artist versus when when they did when it bluegrass and all that was created by by black people or at least we were there in the early years like creating some of the best bluegrass and country music right are we are we going down a path in like 30 to 40 years with hip hop where it kind of gets just extracted and we forget the origins of it in in 100 years like country music or rock with Little Richard who was one of the first major rock art you know what i mean like it feels like we were at the beginning of all of these these genres of music and i can't help but think about hip hop in 50 to 100 to 200 to 300 years not even being the origin of black music well, the gatekeeping in country is more controlled. Mm. I I think that as big as country is, it it only represents smaller populations, so to speak. Okay. Like country is huge, right? Their their mm-hmm. impact is huge. And black people have always dominated music, period. And I think that they've created a culture that, like, the um, how do you say the 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 mu- the musicians and artists in country music come from a culture that's been created. That's what I want to say. Oh, where they've been. I think they grew from a niche. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. I think country okay. music grew from a niche. It 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 actually only represents these pockets of places in America, mm. and they've been able to gatekeep and and be more controlled in who gets recognition 
acknowledgement, airplay, praise, and mm. it's it's it. They don't want to let it slip. Dare, dare I say, <laughs> right? When I yeah. when I say they, it's 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 speaking to like on this corporate level, this corporate right, level right. Of control, and. I think that this is there's this idea like if we give them an inch they'll they'll try to they'll try to take a lot more. And right. Beyonce being as big an art big an artist as she is, that is, I mean that is the threat. That is the threat to opening busting the door wide open. To, you know, can I can I can I talk plain on here? Is this man? You know? This this is what we're trying to do. You just <laughs> that's what we're doing, bro. I'm trying to get you there because I know I know. I know what you're Come on, man. Let's talk. You know, I right, copy. <laughs> I I think that there's this fear that she's gonna nigger it up. Okay. And it, it's it's going to open this door where we superimpose our norms, values, culture on something that they've had a stronghold on for such mm-hmm. a long time. Cause they, it's not to say there ain't no black artists in country. Yeah, there are, and I like them. I enjoy them. Yeah, right. You've never heard them panic like this, right? Because I mean, this is Beyonce here. She's bigger than you, right? Right. She's bigger than us all, right? So (laughs) I think this there's this idea that. One, she's going to open the door for them to their identity to fade or, or you know, and, and it's like, I think that's weird because we don't have to be at war here. Yeah, I think I'd like to say evolve, which it should, you know, like hip hop's evolved from from even just when I was listening to it. I don't I don't almost recognize it from when I was, you know, now imagine this. Imagine hip hop stations playing black country artists, and now that's competing with when it comes to numbers of who, how they're recognized. Right mm. now, you now you have to recognize a Lil Nas X. Now you have to give these artists their just due on your award shows. You, right, they're 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 going to be more present in pop culture as well naturally so um, i think that there's this idea that they're going to lose this grip that they have on it and Mm -hmm. i mean that's that's natural that's that's instinctual but um instinctive you know but and but also what i'm saying is that's okay because that's what's happened with hip-hop already and we're only 30 years old or not, or fit forty, fifty, whatever. 50 old, right. But we're not, we're not fifty years old. We're not very old, fifty years old, right? So, and country's been around, bluegrass, all that's been around forever, right? So right. it's like it's been long enough, and we have had the muddy waters of the world. We have had all these other artists that have come through and been great. And right now, even the, what's really dope, and I didn't even realize, I didn't even anticipate for this conversation to go this direction, but I think it's an interesting. Uh, interesting side sidebar. Uh, Luke Luke Combs, for example, I really like Luke Combs. He has a well, great I like voice, Luke Combs. Um, yeah. and he did Fast Car. He did Tracy Chapman's Fast Car, which was fire. I was just like, thank you, that's super dope. Um, you know, you got Kane Brown. I love Kane Brown. You got Breland. You got you got oh, wow. you got Lil Nas X. Of course, they was going crazy over him. Um, but you have all these artists that are uh, that are there, and there's others too. There's another sister that uh, she's super dope. Um, I can't f- think of her name off the top of my head, but I think I, I agree with you that Beyonce is going to hopefully open up the door for the possibility um, that I that that I can be in the space. Because right now I feel like if I start listening to country music, it's landmines everywhere. Because it's just like, all right, well I don't know if this dude this dude sound like he say the end. This dude sound like he don't like he don't like niggas. Like, I don't, I don't, I can just sense it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you don't, and then what you're talking about and how you're talking about it, like, don't come to my small town or whatever. I'm like, okay, I know who you're talking to. Like, stop, right. stop being dumb. Just say it straight up. I'd be cool with that. Like, all right, cool. At least I know not to mess with that. But like this whole, nah, I didn't mean that. Or I like, nah, come on, bro. Like I have a whole lived experience of this stuff. 
and like right, listening to people va- listen to veiled bigots say things uh, you know and so that's that's why it's hard for me to to listen to some country music because i i already know what you're saying and but He's also at the same true. time i agree that you should be proud of that i'm not saying that you shouldn't be proud of where you come from or what you're doing that's what hip hop's about too but like not in a way that excludes everybody uh you know from enjoying that i guess i don't know but Hip hop does that in some ways too. I'm not saying we're we're perfect in that sense. I mean, there might be. Um, remember when uh, Tretch kind of was really really Tretch on uh, what was the joint? The second single, everything's gonna be everything's gonna be all right off the first album. He said, Talk "If you ain't it, never bro. come to the ghetto, don't don't talk." You know what I mean? He he was really specific at the end of that yeah. song. Um, so that was interesting. I thought. So that to me was like, huh, I don't think of it that way, but he's basically saying, yo, don't, don't, don't talk about this. If you don't come from it, don't, but it was a different era in time also. Right. And, you know, um, it, 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 that reminds me, you know, like, because we have, you know, hip hop has, uh, is young, but we've learned so much in, in this point in time i think i might compare like a ghetto bastard right mm-hmm. uh, that song yeah that's so what it was yeah. jay-z's a uh, jay-z's um life of oj i think that's the name of the song mm, i love that joint please don't die over the neighborhood that's mm-hmm. your mama living right you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying so it it's like you know um He's saying don't come here, but at the same time, we own nothing over here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it, you know, you have to think about that a little bit. Um, but I mean, look, yeah, I, I get it. You know, T- territory, marking territory. You know, right. There's one thing. I can understand wanting people to be authentic in how they represent something that you are a part of. Yes. I think yeah. that's what we're getting at. And yeah. I think that corporate country music thinks that black people are going to misrepresent that. Mm. And that's a fair that's fair to think that's fair to have that fear. It's fair. Right. It's, it's fair because it, it, yeah. we said we, we literally are sitting here talking about like hip hop don't look the same as it used to. But here's one thing that's different, though, in my opinion, <clears throat> and this is what I have to check old heads on. Hip hop has always been about from the first day has been about evolving and innovating music because it's taking samples from former music and making a new version of it and or while paying homage in a way, you know what I'm saying? And so that hip hop's always been about pushing the envelope and changing and bending the genre, in my opinion. Um, And so when old heads get mad about what hip hop is now, I'm like, well, that goes against the whole ethos of what hip hop was because we created it because we couldn't, we didn't have the the instruments. We didn't have, you know, we got, we weren't in all these other spaces because we didn't have no place in it. So we just created our own. And, And now here we are. But it was basically creative from creating, but taking other records, literal records of other music and scratching it and making it ours. <clears throat> That's, that and is, a lot of people have made yeah. a lot of money off of sampling and stuff like that. So not only are we creating the new music, we're also paying old musicians and artists to 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 use that. And so we've also fed older artists too. So this is hip hop is has just spread spread love and money and right. all of that around right. and it's just more of an inclusive in my opinion in terms of the process of creation and the process of of innovation um I don't know I just feel like hip hop is such a great uh, uh, such a great genre that people misunderstand because of how it's represented in mainstream culture and and I like the way you put that I I I forget her name, Ibn Ari, something like that. There was a hip hop violinist. Oh, um, oh yeah, India Ari, you talking about or no? 
Pardon me? Oh, I know. No, no, no. I know who exactly who you're talking about. She had a record out. And I remember. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've incorporated, you know, and I mean, she's not the only live, you know, musician that has been featured in music because um, live instrumentation is, is also always been a part of hip hop. But to kind of showcase that violin skills in a music video, like mm. you're absolutely right. We, we've been the most inclusive genre throughout our entire history. Mm -hmm. And it's accepted. It's what we want. Like at this, at, in, in one breath, it's what we want. In another breath, it's been obviously with anything that's goes corporate, you know, you can go back to the eighties commercials in 85 and 84 when McDonald's commercials are going to use rap dudes rapping to get black people to shoot. Trump just dropped a sneaker and you can't tell me that ain't hip hop infused. He just dropped a, a sneaker because, you know, sneakers are part of hip hop culture. Mm. You know, hip hop culture is not just the music. And this is what KRS, one of my favorite MCs ever. And also basically like my dad, because my dad wasn't around. So I listened to KRS, yeah. Chuck D, um, <clears throat> dudes like that, rock him. And you have you have people who don't understand that what you're doing is you're really actually that's a that's a that's a that's an element of hip hop. KRS said there's seven elements of hip hop, you know, right. DJing, graffiti, art, uh, breakdancing, right. DJing, MCing. Uh, and then obviously rapping, you know, or MC in his rapping, but like, you know, he had all these elements and I was like, man, I never thought about it like that. And so that changed, you know, hip hop versus rap music. Like we're talking about hip hop. Hip hop is the culture, rap music being the, the actual music that is created out of hip hop. Right. Just no different than you said, five percenters versus, you know, uh, Freemasonry. Right. You know, like it's, it's kind of like this whole people conf conflate the two but they're two different we're talking about two different things we're talking about rap music versus hip-hop culture right because you could rap on anything right <laughs> right on, on country production not, <laughs> yeah it doesn't make it hip-hop it's, it's just you know lint biscuit rapped mm, <laughs> so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it, that wasn't hip-hop so you, you're right. right you're absolutely right um, right our, our elements have been extracted for use in other genres and you know that doesn't take over anything um mm -mm. but it, it does show the influence of it mm -hmm. what so we're getting toward, towards the end of this um and i i really thank you for all of that because that was really good I, I didn't anticipate our conversation going there but i thought and we've never really talked about it that deep like that like right. about that you know but i think f i feel like that's um a conversation I haven't all the way heard anywhere. Um, and I just want to, you know, when we talk about, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I'm not saying we're the only people talking about this, but right. I just feel like for my listeners who, who do enjoy rap music, um, but may not understand hip hop culture as well. Um, and understand that this is an actual culture, it, like sneakers. I could do a whole semester class on, the trajectory of the NBA and hip hop and how they basically align. If they were stocks and you had a little stock graph and there was NBA and hip hop and I could put them side by side, they would basically have the same trajectory, like almost literally side by side with each other uh, from pre AI to post AI, you know, and I could just do pre Allen Iverson and post Allen Iverson. That's how I would like cut it. More. Um, More. Because from my perspective and what I saw, I saw, cornrows tats all that kind of stuff then be you know um accepted not first out the gate but eventually um and what they're really fighting was they're fighting players dressing in certain ways you can't wear jerseys anymore you can't do all this but they were fighting really hip-hop culture um yeah. being infused with nba and now it's just you can't do nothing about it now because it's when you go to commercial you hearing a, a hip-hop track you hearing a hip-hop instrumental when you in the stu when you in the stadium, you're probably going to hear some hip hop music playing. When you go to your local high school game, chances are you're gonna probably hear some hip hop playing. You know, like this just it's just part of the culture of of basketball, right? Right. Oh yeah. So, 
I don't know. I just I, and I I don't want people to understand it more than just they might go to there and just hear the music and think that that's just the music that they like. I'm like, no, this is actually deeper than that. This is actually part of hip hop. Hip hop is part of bas- basketball, and basketball is part of hip hop. You know, it just is what it is. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, at this point, um, you really can't even separate the two. I mean, think about Jada Kiss, Styles P, with the Reebok commercials, mm, yeah, as well. The S. Doc Carter's, right? Talk about it, and um, the AIs. They also did the AIs. The AIs, yep. They, they did the AIs the the commercial, screen, yep. Right. So, yep. It just sucks because I think in the beginning, even now, I was just in a planning meeting and, you know, the the planners, they would they are looking for safe hip hop, safe hip hop. Because yeah, yeah. It, it's associated with violence. It's associated with black people. So now it's like in this bucket, like hip hop, black people, violence, it all goes like <laughs> hand in hand. Yeah. That, that, that kind of sucks. It yeah, really yeah, yeah. It does. Um, but it, it's violence kind of latches on to that. I don't think it's a part of hip hop at all, right? right? I think that has a part of like socioeconomic classes and you know whatever conditions you come from, etc. That just so happens to intersect with. The culture of hip hop, but right. I don't think it, I don't think violence intersects with hip hop. I think it latches onto it, almost like uh, like a blood sucker. Yeah, it just sucks that we are associated with that. Yeah, well, well, we're, we're, it's going to continue to evolve. It'll continue to do its thing. Um, what? Leaving on a last note. What would you like our listeners to know about hip hop as you see it? Or like if they had any, like we, we've kind of already touched on some things, but is there any other things that you, you want people to know about hip hop that as an artist and a songwriter that you want people to know about in, in terms of black history and how it's tied to the culture, which we've been talking to about up to this point, but anything else that we right. didn't touch on maybe? Hip hop is, is, American history. That's that's what I would want people to understand. It has regional identities. Um, it has cultural overtones. Mm. Linguistically, we speak in hip hop terms. It has its own nuances. It has its own life, and it's singular to America. Mm. and you can't get rid of it 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 is it deserves attention it deserves study it deserves analyzing Um, it deserves to be played Mm. and Mm -hmm. that's that's all i would have to say about it yeah no that's that's a great way to end man no, and I agree 100% with everything you just said. Now, there is one segment that I didn't tell you about that we're, that we're going to end on, and it's called Hot Take. And Hot Take is just one. It's an either-or answer. There's only five questions, and you just okay. say either-or. I'll just give you two two options. You just got to choose one. I All can't right, say ready both. For hot... Nope, you can't say both. You got to choose All one. Right. All right, here we go. Ready for Hot Take? Ready. All right, here we go. Queens of Brooklyn. Oh come on! <laughs> Only answer is Queens, <laughs> North Side. Right. All right, one million dollars a dinner with Hove, Jay Z. I gotta take the Millie. <laughs> yep, that's Amelie, what I said. Amelie, Amelie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buying the CD or streaming? You know what? I got to choose. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to go with the CD. Oh, really? I'm going to go with the CD. Dang. Yo, reading the lyrics. Yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. Can't even po- taping that to your wall. Oh yeah. God, bro, the keepsake. Yeah. 
you know but bro you can you can just click on you can tap the little thing and look at the lyrics on the on your on your phone too i think you know at apple music you can i know i think you can do it in spotify yeah. too. yeah it's it's something about that tangible yeah no nah, you know, it's you. like it's like a getting a real book versus an audio book almost. yeah you're right like i gotta 100%. i gotta crack a page yep 100 percent. all right rock aware velour suit or a sean john velour suit Ooh. <laughs> you, this is actually kind of tough. You back to the, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. actually kind of tough because Rockwell yeah. had the baby blue powder blue. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? White knight. The, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, ooh. <laughs> I'm a huge Biggie fan. I don't know. If, I mean, I want to say Sean Jonathan. But your rocker wheel had had us in the chokehold, so I'm gonna go with the the rocker wheel velour. Yeah, the rocker wheel velour was was nice. I never owned any, but I was I always wanted to. We didn't have it over here like that. We didn't have it over here like that. Oh, that was the pre internet days. Too. Honorable mention the Aniche velour. Oh my god. <laughs> we had the <laughs> fake joints. Yeah, that worked too. Yeah, I mean, you had to go to South Tacoma Way and grab the fake joints. <laughs> cross color fubu yeah, nah, anything right. you had to go especially back in the velour suits you had to go because they wasn't carrying them at the mall or nothing like that so you had to go right. to the to the off-brand off shops and it check them out one time. <laughs> all right last one being an artist or being a writer oh this was good this was good is the last one yeah that's the last this was one good. this was good um an artist or a writer an artist or a writer it's like it's like a dna i have to split that they, mm-hmm. they both kind of are a part of it's like mother yeah. and father that make the child yep yeah. yeah. artist or the writer like if you're doing the act like right now would you rather write for somebody or would you rather like make the song yourself and be the be the artist um, I would rather make the song myself and be the artist only because I have such a particular style mm-hmm. and story that I don't think anybody else could deliver it like how I can. Okay. But writing, writing is, I, I, I could do some writing, bro. So, mm-hmm. but if I had to choose the way you just put it, if, you know, if I could still like make the song and perform it. I'll choose that. Yeah. No, that's what's up. That's <laughs> I know that's a tough question because I know I understand the creative process is in it's no way this is no way I feel about shooting something, like a shooting a story that I was involved in or whatever. And I'm like, right. okay, well someone else who edits it versus shooting it, so they're shooting and then there's editing and t- right. and they're two different things, you know? Right. And editing somebody else's shooting is hard for me because it's like I didn't see it the same way you saw it or I would have taken the, probably some different shots maybe maybe not if you get a good shooter then you'd be like dang you gave me a lot to work with thank you but I've been in some situations where like dang I don't really got much to work with I gotta figure this out you know so right. it's all different um, cool well I appreciate you coming on man this was this was really super dope um, and <laughs> let everyone know I got you got 30 seconds man how do people get in touch with you what do you want them to know about you where can they find your music all the other things Copy. You can get in touch with me at. I'm on Instagram. I'm the only Eubankcito. The only Eubankcito. E U B A N K S I T O. E U B A N K S I T O. Shoot me a message. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Keep it simple, just like that. That's what's up, man. And I want, and just so people know, you're doing way. You're doing a lot of work in the community as well. You're working with 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 kids and youth and mental health and doing all that, like you said at the beginning. So. Um, I know we talked a lot about music, but you're you're way more than just that. But you know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk music with me, man. Because I, I, there's there's not a lot of people who I can get in the weeds with, you know, about just certain things and thinking about it from different ways and 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 thinking about it like that. So thank I'm glad you. to be one of those guys, bro. Let's run it back. Part two, part two. We got. Oh, we're back. gonna run it back. Oh, most All definitely right. gonna run it back because I, right. I I love talking about this. All right, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking a listen. 
that's Black History Month Reflection Series. Uh, I think I might have one more. This might be the last one. I'm not all the way sure. But if not, still, you can go back. We got multiple years of these. Um, we've had everyone mm. from Kid Sensation on here to John Frazier to Corey Strozier to Bernadette Ray to a lot of community members um, and just different people. Kevin Williams. Shout out to Kev. Uh, so anyway, with that, we're mm. out. Peace. Peace. Peace.